When these cars were new, sports cars were still a relatively new thing in the United States, and you either identified as a British car guy with your MG or your Jaguar, or a Porsche guy, or you were an Italian car guy, and you could either afford Ferraris and Maseratis or Alphas and Fiats. My father, Martin Swig, was a lifelong car enthusiast and made his business in the car world with retail car dealerships, but was always a, a passionate enthusiast. And the mark that really uh, captured his imagination was Alfa Romeo. You develop this wonderful feeling for what it is to get behind the wheel of a Giulietta and extract the most out of it. And the driving experience is a very rewarding one because you have such a advanced and sophisticated machine working with you. And with these two particular cars and, and all of those nostalgic feelings of our youth that, that we have tied up in them, uh, when you combine that with the actual experience of getting on the road, it's something that is just incredibly fulfilling. Without a doubt, the Zagato is the most fun car to drive. The white sprint Veloce is less engaging as a driver's car, but certainly still very, very engaging in the context of late 1950s small displacement sports cars. They really make you feel like you are driving the car. There's no electronic aids, there's no traction control. It's all about your steering, throttle inputs, your braking inputs, and it's, it's all about finesse. My name is David Swig. My name is Howard Swig. Today we are driving a 1959 Alfa Romeo Giulietta Veloce Zagato and a 1960 Alfa Romeo Giulietta Sprint Veloce. The Zagato started life as uh, a 1959 Giulietta Spider Veloce 750 in Farina body. It was purchased by a wealthy uh, German doctor. He sent the car to Zagato in late 59, early 1960. It then came to the US in 1966 uh, and really has been here ever since. The other car is a 1960 Alfa Romeo Giulietta Sprint Veloce. It is mildly modified, as you might have done in, in the 50s and 60s, for more spirited driving or, or local races and rallies. It's got Weber carburetors and, and a hot cam, and, but very much stock in appearance. And that's always kind of been the, the, the go-to Giulietta driver in the family for, for the last 35 years. When you get behind the wheel of each, um, you, you really see the, the advancements that were made. Uh, I mean, just driving around today, we, we hop in the, in the Sprint Veloce, which um, is miles ahead of a, of a stock 1300 Nomale uh, single Solex carburetor Giulietta. And, and then you hop in the Zagato, and it's another world. Handling is crisper, the brakes are better, the, the, the acceleration is stronger. And so it's interesting to drive these cars back to back, which essentially have a lot of the same underpinnings, but when you get behind the wheel, it, it can be a totally different experience. To be out there in a group of cars that is so representative of the period, it really transports you back to a time when these great drivers were, were racing these things on the, the greatest race circuits in Europe. So you get a little bit of a taste that you can't get from a history book. You could say that the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. I mean, my father, he made his career in the car business. And for Howard and I, growing up around vintage cars, watching what was going on with, with the market, the commercial side of this business, it was only natural for Howard and I to find our way into it as a career. I mean, I can't imagine what else I'd do that I'd be any good at. So it's something that has been sort of a, a lifelong training to be uh, in the auction business as, as I am and as Howard is. Our dad was very much an old school guy. He owned and collected and drove cars in, in kind of a, a respectful, representative way of the period and the way that they were meant to be, to be driven and enjoyed. Me and my brother uh, certainly have that same feeling. On the other hand, you know, we're now in the 21st century, so I think our dad was great at a lot of things, but as we get older and, and get some experience under our belt, we also see things that he could have done better and that we want to improve and have improved. He certainly laid the groundwork for us to do all this, but we've got a lot of years ahead of us to make it better and, and make it our own. I think we're off to a good start. We've taken bits and pieces of his automotive experience and sort of intertwined it with our own. But I think the common thread is enjoying everything that the car world has to offer. We like all this stuff. Alphas happen to be sort of the, the focal point. When my father passed away, one of our good family friends told me something very important. He said, you know, your father has very big shoes to fill, but don't forget that you have your own shoes. We don't do all this just to pay tribute to our father's memory. I mean, it's also because we love it ourselves, and I think that he successfully instilled his enthusiasm and passion in us 
and we do it for our own reasons as much as it, it brings us closer to, to our Father. I think both of us, as we went to work in the car world, our, our dad was always such a wonderful resource for advice and to bounce ideas off of, and we really leaned on him for guidance. He has gone, unfortunately, but as we both have progressed in our careers, I'm finding that the same sort of dynamic between David and I, uh, bouncing ideas off of each other, picking each other's brains on, on, uh, on this and that, so it's, it's, it's cool. I think a lot of families, as they get older, siblings will grow apart. I think the opposite is true for us. I think you know, our careers and our passions are very much aligned with the cars, sharing the cars and the experiences of, of ownership and, and doing all these events, California Mille and whatnot. It, it certainly brought us closer. We would both agree it's nice to have a companion to do all this car stuff with. A family heirloom is a ring or something you pass down. These cars are more than that. These cars truly become a part of the family over years you develop an emotional connection with these cars and they're idiosyncratic. They have quirks just like people do and you find out how the cars work and what they respond to well or not so well and you develop a relationship with the machine. For us having grown up with these cars with our father, maybe it's the nostalgia of youth that these cars sort of bring back when you get behind the wheel and fire them up. We drive them as much as we can. The worst thing you can do with an old car is let it sit. They decay and they get sad and their souls become empty and things break and go wrong with them. Keeping things circulating, keeping fluids going and, and whatnot shows the cars that you love them and, and they respond well to that and, and we'll continue to drive them. And the, the beautiful thing is that the cars will outlive all of us. It's really wonderful to have that generational transfer of enthusiasm for not only these two cars, but this entire world of automotive experiences that Howard and I have absolutely soaked up like a sponge. I think that's what it's all about, is the shared experience.